When I was four years old, I killed someone. And 43 years later, I received the Ahimsa Award for my work on global nonviolence. It was a hot summer day, and I was with my parents on my father's fishing boat, my favorite place in the world to be. And then I caught my first fish. My parents clapped and laughed, but I felt distraught. My parents had instilled in me a strong commitment to practicing the golden rule, to relate to others with respect. Yet it seemed like everywhere I turned, this supposedly highest principle was being violated, and nobody was the least bit concerned. When you think about some of the most serious problems, not only in our personal lives, but also in the world, such as domestic abuse, self-harm, war, poverty, racism, patriarchy, animal exploitation, and climate change, you can see that they all share a common denominator, which is relational dysfunction or dysfunctional ways of relating. My research led me to discover that there's a specific mentality at the core of all oppressive and abusive behaviors, whether the behaviors are directed toward human or non-human beings. This formula applies to all kinds of relationships, to how social groups relate, how two or several individuals relate, and to how we relate to ourselves. It also applies to how we relate to other animals in the environment. The formula applies equally to brief interactions and long-term relationships. Relationships are, after all, a series of interactions. Uh, and of course, it applies to how we communicate since communication is the primary way we relate. My research led me to recognize both the meta problem facing our world, relational dysfunction, and the meta-solution to this problem, relational literacy, the understanding of and ability to practice healthy ways of relating. And I realized that all of us who are working towards social transformation have the same meta-mission, to create a more relational world. Relational literacy isn't the only solution to our problems, but it's foundational to all other solutions. Personal and social transformation isn't possible if we keep our focus limited to the content. Who is oppressing or abusing whom? We need to understand and address the process, how and why we oppress and abuse in the first place. If we want to create a healthier world for everyone, we need to change the way we relate.